Hey, what's going on? I'm Illegal Mist, and today we're going to be talking about Live Arena, and we're going to look at strategies for early, mid, and late game accounts in order to maximize your potential to be able to get the most out of Live Arena. Let's get right into it. Typically for an arena team, you have three roles that need to be filled. You need champions that are able to deal damage, you need champions that are able to support, and you need champions that are able to provide some sort of crowd control ability. When I talk about damage dealers, I'm most likely talking about champions like Baron that are able to deal significant amounts of damage. When I'm talking about champions that provide support, I'm talking about champions like Duchess that give your team a revive, something like a block debuffs or increase attack to help you deal more damage. And when I'm talking about champions that can provide crowd control for your team, I'm talking about champions maybe like Romantu that are able to go in and place block active or block passive skills on the enemy team. These three champions are specific examples of higher end champions that you can use, but we can look at other champions that are able to provide that similar type of support for your team. When talking about these three roles, it's important to note that you want champions that are either exceptionally good at that one type of ability or champions that are very good at multiple types. Archmage is also a champion that I think will go really under the radar in early and mid game accounts for Live Arena. I think he's a champion that typically won't get banned, but he provides your team with a couple different types of utility. His A2 goes in, and if he attacks with a critical hit, he has a 75% chance when booked of placing a stun on all enemies for one turn. If for whatever reason the enemy doesn't have a stun, he'll decrease the enemy's turn meter by 20%. So he's really great at being able to control the enemy with a stun, or he'll decrease their turn meter, increasing your team's likelihood of getting an attack before them. His A3 also comes in, places increased speed, crit rate, and crit damage on all allies. This ability is nice to be able to help you cycle through your abilities quicker, or he'll be able to go in and help your team provide additional damage to the enemy. Another thing that's really nice about Archmage, you could build him really fast and make sure that he has high accuracy and crit rate, and the enemy won't be able to decrease his turn meter. If the enemy is not able to decrease his turn meter, he can be used against champions like Morgane or someone like Lissandra, and he'll be able to cut in on the enemy team and use his A2 ability to stun the enemy. He also provides the team with a 17% ally speed in all battles. Someone like Burangiri who comes in with a 60% chance of placing a stun, as well as a 40% chance of placing provoke on the A1, and a shield and strengthen on all allies. A champion like Silar is also great because she can come in, place decreased speed on the enemies, as well as decrease their turn meter by 40%, and she also has AoE abilities on her A1 and A2, so if she's built in a stun set, she'll be able to effectively control the enemy and decrease their turn meter. If you're an early or mid-game account, a champion like Maneater could be great for your Live Arena team as well. Maneater comes in, and as long as his A1 is critical, he'll place decrease attack on the entire enemy team. His A2 comes in, and it fully depletes the target's turn meter, and then he gains that additional turn meter, so it helps him cycle back through his abilities even faster. The skill that Maneater is most known for is his block debuffs and unkillable move that's on a 5 turn cooldown. With this move being on a high turn cooldown, it's nice to go in with his A2 ability and steal the enemy's turn meter to get it down to almost a 4 turn cooldown. Maneater is nice because he can come in as a little bit of a sleeper pick. Against champions like Baron or any other nuker, he can go in and effectively make sure that the enemy team is not able to take out all of your damage dealers. Your Maneater might be built pretty quickly as well because you're using him for claim boss and your fast Maneater could be about 268 speed. Fenex is so great because he provides your team with the ability to place decreased defense and decreased speed on one enemy. He can also place a block buffs or block active skills depending on which one lands. And then his A1 comes in with an absolute nuke, but if there's a debuff on the enemy, he'll go in and hit the enemy twice, and if he kills the enemy, they won't be able to be revived. So Fenex provides your team with a super win condition in the fact that he'll place block revive on the enemy, and he's able to place block buffs on an 80% chance or decrease defense and decrease speed on enemy. So he comes in, he's able to provide your team with some sort of utility, as well as be an incredibly strong single target damage dealer. A champion like Seeker might only provide your team with support, but he does support in multiple ways. His A1 has a 75% chance of placing a provoke because it's two hits at a 50% rate. His A2 ability provides your team with increased attack and a turn meter fill, and then he grants himself an extra turn. And his passive, whenever he's hit with a critical hit, he'll provide 20% HP for himself and an increased defense on all allies for two turns. So Seeker comes in, he provides your team with a crowd control ability on one enemy, he provides increased turn meter for your team, and he also gives your team increased attack. So he can be really useful, and he's probably already built if you have him in an earlier mid-game account. For early and mid-game accounts, champions that provide your team with both an offensive and defensive capability are much more versatile and useful than if you're using a champion that only provides you with one of those types of abilities. A champion like Martyr is a good example of someone that provides your team with support as well as being able to provide extra damage or increase your team's overall damage. The reason Martyr is so good, and I think she might be able to be used in lower end live arena, her A1 has a 75% chance when booked of placing decreased defense, allowing your team to deal more damage. Her A2 brings in the increased defense, increasing your team's sustainability, and if you have any defensive nukers, she can come in and give them additional damage. 
as well as she provides the counter attack which again gives you increased damage. So right now her kit fully revolves around being able to provide additional damage for your team, but she also comes in with her A3 ability and is able to place a decreased attack on the enemy making the enemy deal less damage, as well as a provoke which is able to control the enemy team. So she comes in, she provides support in your team in the sense of being able to crowd control the enemy, decrease the damage they do, and she's able to give your team a increased defense and counter attack to help deal extra damage with the decreased defense as well, being able to provide even more damage to the enemy. An example of a champion that's able to fill in the support and crowd control roles is a champion like Mighty Uko in a stun or provoke set. For Mighty Uko, he has an A1 that has a 75% chance of placing decreased attack. He can strip up to four buffs as well as place block buffs and decrease accuracy on the enemy. And he can go in, revive all allies and place increased speed. But if he's built in a stun set, he's able to go in and provide crowd control abilities on the enemy. So he provides support in the way of decreasing the enemy's chance to be able to take out your team as well as crowd control if he's built in a set like stun set because he has an AoE, A1, and A2 ability. A champion that I think is going to be excellent for mid-game accounts is a champion like Ragash. I've used him a couple times in Live Arena already, and I plan on using him a lot more. The reason Ragash is so good, he provides himself with an increased attack as he's a defense-based damage dealer. He goes in, he places decreased defense before attacking, so it's only an accuracy requirement to land the decreased defense, and then he can also place a stun on enemies as long as it doesn't land a weak hit. His A3 goes in and places strengthen and increase speed, and then a perfect veil on himself for two turns, and this is on a four turn cooldown. So he's providing your team with support in the sense of being able to increase your speed and strengthen to decrease the damage the enemy deals, as well as a perfect veil on himself to make himself even more tanky. At the start of every turn, he also places Perfect Veil on the ally with the highest attack, so if he comes in with another damage dealer, he can essentially help protect that damage dealer as well. And he also deals 20% more damage against enemies whose defense is lower than his. If you build him like a tanky defensive nuker, he typically will have higher defense than the enemy. So you can build Ragash in multiple ways and have him support your team in different roles. A champion like Snicktrax is also going to be really useful as he provides the role of support, being able to place ally protection and reflect damage on your team, as well as a decreased speed on the enemy. His passive helps him kind of be a damage dealer because he increases the amount of damage reflected from reflect damage by 20%, as well as reflecting 50% of the damage he receives back to the attacker. So if you built him with 100,000 HP and a candy came in and hit him for 80k damage, that candy would take 40k damage. Most nukers aren't built with more than 40k health, so he would effectively take out their damage dealers. It's happened to me a couple times where my Baron nukes a team with a Snicktrax, and my Baron dies while the enemy team lives. So he comes in, he provides not only that support role, but also a damage dealing role. A champion that's able to fill in two of those roles is a champion like Cardiel. Cardiel is able to go in and place cleanse, block debuffs, and a revive on death for your team. So he provides excellent support for your team, and his A1 goes in and heals all allies by 7.5% of their health. Along with his passive, his passive has a 30% chance when booked of teaming up with allies to attack the enemy with his A1, so he gains even more healing for your team. So Cardiel is an excellent support champion, but he also comes in and helps fill in the role of damage dealer. The reason I say that is because his A3 goes in, and on a 4 turn cooldown, or 3 turn if you kill the enemy, he places increased crit rate and crit damage and then teams up with all allies to do an ally attack. So Cardiel comes in and he's an excellent support champion, but he's also able to go in and provide additional damage for your team to help you get over the line of being able to take out the enemy team. A champion like Morgane has actually been very difficult for me to counter in Live Arena. One of the interesting things about Morgane is the fact that she goes in every time she has a turn, she places heal reduction on the enemy with the lowest HP for 2 turns. She's also able to go in and provide decreased turn meter of 20% on all enemies and increased turn meter on all allies by 20% and then give the increased speed for two turns. She's also able to come in with her A2 ability, steal all of the buffs from one enemy and then place true fear on all enemies for one turn. The reason I think Morgane's gonna be much more useful in Live Arena is because this ability is gonna be able to target whichever enemy you need. So if their damage dealer has block debuffs and increased attack on, she can go in, steal those buffs, and then place true fear on that enemy as well as anyone else that doesn't have block debuffs up. If you use a champion like Morgane with a champion like Fortis, I think that's where you start to see the ability of flex champions be so imperative. The reason Fortis could be used very effectively in Live Arena is the fact that not only does he have the ability to increase the chance of fear and true fear proccing, but he also comes in with his A3 ability, which is a secret skill. 
This skill will ignore 30% defense on anyone under fear or true fear. The damage of this skill though ramps up every time he uses it by an additional 10%. He's also able to come in with his A2 ability and place true fear on enemies for one turn, and this is irresistible if the enemy already has fear on them. With it being 100% chance and on a 3 turn cooldown, paired up with a champion like Morgane, he can get back to his Astral Terror's ability and have a high chance of increasing the damage that this skill does very quickly. So Fortis comes in, he's defense based, typically seen as a nuker so he deals a decent bit of damage, he provides crowd control on the enemy, and he has a win condition in the ability to ramp up his damage with his secret skill. Another champion that can be excellent for live arena is a champion like your Karl. Your Karl hits really hard and he also comes in with an irresistible freeze on his A3 ability. Your Karl is able to fill in two roles by being a damage dealer and place freeze. The nice thing about your Karl, you can build him completely for damage and he still fills both of those roles because his A3 ability has a 100% chance when the enemy's turn meter is 75% or more, and this ability is irresistible. A champion like Vlad is typically seen as an underwhelming nuker because he doesn't provide enough damage against the enemy. When used in live arena though, I think Vlad can be a very viable champion. Vlad deals pretty good damage on his A2 and A3 abilities, but the reason he can be so useful for Live Arena is the fact that he also is able to provide a decreased defense and block active skills. So you can build a champion like Vlad to either be a damage dealer or a crowd control ability champion, so that way the enemy is not able to use their abilities for two turns. If you go in with another damage dealer or other ways to control the enemy, you can effectively lock out the enemy team and have a much easier chance of beating them. Vlad's also a great champion because his A1 ability goes in and destroys the max HP of the enemy by 30% of the damage he inflicts, and he also heals himself. So Vlad's really nice to be able to use in longer live arena battles because he can destroy the enemy's HP, making it easier to kill them. Another champion I think could be great for live arena for earlier mid game accounts is someone like Totora. Totora comes in and he provides your team with the ability to place perfect veil on all allies except himself. And he's able to place block debuffs and increase defense on all allies for two turns on a three turn cooldown. The reason I think he's a sneaky pick though is because he deals a lot of damage and his A3 ability is kind of a nuke that's able to place a shield equal to 20% of the damage inflicted. So he places a perfect veil on all of your allies just like Duchess and he places a 20% shield based on the damage he deals. On top of that, his passive is able to reflect 30% of the damage the enemy deal to him and he has a 30% chance of placing a freeze for one turn. So this champion paired with someone like your Karl could be excellent because he provides the freeze on the enemy. He'll place the perfect veil so that they kind of have to attack him. And then he's also providing increased defense and block debuffs on a three turn cooldown. Skiramis could be a sleeper pick again because he's really useful at providing crowd control on the enemy. He goes in with his A3 ability and has a 100% chance of placing a provoke and then places a counter attack and continuous heal buff on himself for two turns. This move paired with his A1 is really nice because he has a 90% chance of stealing 15% of the enemy's turn meter and if he decreases the enemy's turn meter by 100%, he has a 30% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. While you might not have any of the champions that I recommend, you can go in and look at all your level 60 champions to see which ones are able to fill two roles. If you have any champions that are able to fill in two of the roles of support, damage, or control, you're able to go in and have a flexible spot that the enemy likely won't ban. It gives you the option of being able to build that champion either with high accuracy or high damage or a hybrid of both and the enemy won't be able to build specifically against that champion. If you're able to do that, you have a much higher chance of winning the fight and being more successful in live arena. That's all I've got for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions or any other tips that I may have missed in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.